Welcome to Chat Tsunami. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Chat Tsunami. I'm Satsunami, and joining me today to talk about, quite frankly, a calamari colossus that has been sweeping the globe right now is my fellow friend and or squid, Adam. Adam, welcome back to the show. Hello, hello. Good to be back. They, they say that good rain knows the best time to fall. A good chat tsunami also knows the best time to fall, I believe. That is indeed true. So yeah, as you could tell by that very subtle introduction, today we are talking about a show that has been pretty much everywhere, hasn't it? Pretty much. And I, I, honestly, I don't think you can go on the internet now without seeing this particular show being memed. That show, of course, being Squid Game, which has taken the world by storm on Netflix. I was about to say other places, but as far as I know, it is only Netflix. I mean, uh, legally. Legally. <laughs> yeah, that that is true. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't condone that in Chat Tsunami because, yes, we do pay for our um, our very hefty Netflix bills. But if <laughs> Netflix would like to sponsor us for this episode, wink, wink, and, you know, shave a couple of pounds off, please do. We are, we are very receptive to offers. With a ringing endorsement like that, I can't see how they can <laughs> fail not to. Yes, all shows on Netflix are amazing. Wait, hold on, that's the, yeah, that's the door. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Yeah, it's a weird golden card that posted through my door. I'm sure nothing can go wrong. Before we dive into, you know, Squid Game, because let's face it, loads of people have been talking about this show. It is absolutely fantastic. Everyone has been raving, ranting. Even people who aren't into, like, Korean media, like, you know, you've got your K-dramas, K-pop, and all of that. Even people outside of those spheres are getting into this show, which just shows how influential it actually is. But I'm quite curious curious before we go into squid game what is your experience with like korean movies and shows and things like that like were you into them before squid game came around so my experience with with korean media can be summed up uh, with one of one name bong john bong joon ho um i hope i pronounced that right <laughs> um uh, probably the most fa- i think well i think definitely the most famous korean director certainly to an international audience mm-hmm. the most famous korean director um who's made films such as parasite uh snowpiercer Mm-hmm. Memories of a Murder. Yeah, so I've seen, I've seen, I've seen all three of those films. Basically, he is my, he is my exposure to to Korean media. I mean, they are all solid films. To be fair, oh, they're amazing. Oh. Yeah. I mean, Parasite especially. Parasite, like that was the. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but was that not the last Korean film that like swept everyone off their feet? Oh, I, I think as far as I know, anyway, because mm-hmm. that that was also the, the first uh, foreign language film to win the Best Picture Oscar. Oh, um, yeah. Deserved because it's, it's fantastic oh yeah definitely and I think that's available on Amazon Prime I'm not cheating on you Netflix if you still want to offer that you know I'll cut this segment out of the episode but if not you know Amazon ring us up because <laughs> clearly they need the money for us to promote them. But yeah, Parasite is just an absolutely fantastic film as well. I mean, for me personally, I have to admit, I've I've seen a couple. Although, I have to admit, they're probably more mainstream. You know, like Parasite, Train to Busan is especially another fantastic one. Nowhere Man as well. That was a great one. Did you ever see that one? Oh, no, 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 that one. No, it's like a, I think it's a martial arts one or like an action one is probably a better term for it. And I have to admit, I have dipped my toes. I'm quite curious. Have you done this as well? Have you ever dipped your toe into the like proper K dramas? Or... No, my fiance has. Um, she's dipped her toe into a couple of them. Um, she's quite enjoyed them, but I, I have not. There were a couple I checked out, and I've got to say, there's a reason why there's tropes in them. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, like um, Descendants of the Sun was like one I think that was 2016 that came out that it was like everywhere because I was reading up on like before this I was doing research I'm not just an avid key drama fan <laughs> I was like, this oh, is you can, a, you can this is, here. You can this is, this is, yeah, this is a chat tsunami exclusive. Chat tsunami comes out as a total K drama weep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, th- there's been quite a couple that I have seen. Some of them are absolutely fantastic. Others I've kind of sat through and thought, what, what, what the heck is this <laughs> kind of thing? You know, and 
It is weird because it's definitely a medium that is either, I don't want to say it's like Marmite, but you know, it's like, it's either people like love them or they just can't get into them. I wouldn't go as far and say that people hate them, but I can see why maybe people don't like them. I mean, that there's a lot of like, kind of very outlandish plots, like one I'm kind of thinking off the top of my head, Our Love from the Stars was one that was like <laughs> see this is the thing it's like a time traveling alien or something that falls in love and it's like huh how do we get international audiences into this one answer <laughs> you don't you know and then you get like other ones like crash landing on you which was like a love drama between like north and south korea and that kind of got attention in the news as well because i was reading like <laughs> this is me going back to my university days adam i was reading through like bbc articles of all things that were popping up talking about K-dramas but it's like they have their 15 minutes of fame but yeah. they never really stayed it. I mean correct me if I'm wrong like can you think of any shows like other than Parasite, Train to Busan or like Squid Game of course like can you think of any kind of Korean dramas that like had more than 15 minutes of fame? I honestly couldn't tell you a single name of a K-drama yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that probably says everything. Yeah. Also speaks to my ignorance but also maybe speaks to their uh, last their staying power well all i'm saying is netflix wink wink <laughs> if you want to hear more k-drama recommendations then netflix ring me up and i am um, well advertised for you before we jump into the main topic of today how did you actually hear about squid game so i first saw squid game uh when me and my fiance went went on to one of our many netflix our trips onto netflix mm -hmm. um, and it was it was obviously just been released and it was like one of the featured things mm -hmm. And we well, looked interesting. We watched the trailer, and this is this is the great current debate in in our household about who didn't want to watch it. Because I think she didn't want to watch it, and she thinks I didn't want to watch it. But for whatever reason, one of us didn't want to watch it. One of us didn't think it looked like a kind of thing we'd be interested in. So we kind of left it, moved on with our lives. And honestly, I kind of forgot about it. And it was only through <laughs> it was only through meme culture <laughs> that I became aware of it, and and it resurfaced. And I saw all these memes. I was like, what the? I was like. Oh, these are funny memes, but I have no idea what this is. And then I found out it was Squid Game. And then at the same time, my fiance, I think, had, had I was speaking to her sister who really liked it, and so it was kind of keen, eager to watch it again. So I thought I'll give it a try. And yeah, that's how we we fell into it. And <laughs> do you regret that decision or? <laughs> no, no, no. I really enjoyed it. So no, mm. glad glad we did. I'm glad. Mm. I'm glad. Like got, I got the push to. Cause I'm not sure I would have gone back to watch it if like if uh, mm. my fiance hadn't like kind of pushed. So, yeah, mm. glad you did that. Oh, no, it's definitely worth it. It's one of those shows that I think is definitely worth it to take the plunge on. Because as I said before, like, K-dramas, from what I've seen on them, I'm not going to, like, act as if I'm an authority on the topic. Yeah. I, no, no, you were lyrical about them earlier, so I, yeah. I, I see you as the, as the foremost authority now on K-dramas. Yeah. Well, do you want to know, actually, how I know so much about K-dramas? And it's going to be the weirdest thing. It's basically I've got a friend who we both were kind of talking about because I'm very much into like language learning but Korean of all things is not a language I've ever really wanted to pick up nothing against Korean but just I'd be more interested in like Spanish and Chinese and things but I've got a friend who's really into these K-dramas so every so often they'll you know message me and say oh I'm watching this like K-drama do you want to watch it with me like if I'm um I've got free time and I'm like yeah sure you know let's watch like a couple of episodes and honestly it's taken me like through like a loop you know it's like some of them have been absolutely fantastic other ones have been thinking what the hell and the sense of like train to busan and that that's obviously that's just friends that have recommended it or the case of parasite it's because it's been so critically acclaimed that everyone says oh yeah everybody watch it but for squid game i remember this friend had recommended it and they said oh i'm gonna watch this do you want to watch it with me and i was like ah, i don't know and then one night i was just really bored and i saw squid game pop up and this was, I, I don't want to come across as a contrarian, by the way, so apologies if I do, like, come across as Satsunami the hipster here, but I genuinely watched it, like, I think a week before it took off. I remember I watched it because th this is the weird thing about me, like, I, because I do language learning and things, I watch a lot of, like, really weird shows that I probably wouldn't otherwise. For example, like, one of the best ones is Money Heist or La Casa de Papel for, like, Spanish learning and things, and that's a show, like, I wouldn't have really touched 
unless I was learning Spanish, but, you know, fantastic show, but, sorry, that's a side tangent. But for Squid Game, I was like, you know what, you know, I'm bored, I've got nothing else to do. And then after the first episode, bam, I was immediately hooked. I thought, this is fantastic, and I binge-watched it in about probably two days, I think, give or take. Well, two or three days. (laughs) I'll, I'll say three days to pretend I'm a, you know, productive member of society. And, yeah, I absolutely loved it. I remember actually looking up to see if anyone else was talking about it. And at the time, nobody was talking about it. It was very silent. The memes were very sparse. <laughs> there was nobody talking about it. And I'm like, oh, that's a shame. But that, that was a good show. I can't wait to be that, you know, annoying friend at the party to be like, hey, have you checked out Squid Game? It was a good one. But then, all of a sudden, the week after, it just blew up. It was everywhere. Like, I, you couldn't, like, turn on your computer without seeing Squid Game or the people in the PlayStation masks or the cards or the, you know, people reenacting the challenges and things. Sorry, that was just like a really long way of telling you. Yeah, it was just a weird experience seeing a show that like I picked up thinking, oh, this is a great show, but I don't think people will really be into it. And then all of a sudden, it's like a national television in the UK as well. I mean, it is all over the place. I honestly can't like overstate that enough. (laughs) It is everywhere. But I mean, even my family, like my family aren't the biggest fans of like trying shows like Squid Game. You know, they enjoyed Parasite, but you know, I I don't think that would be one they would actively look for, if you know what I mean. Yeah, they wouldn't like say, oh, let's watch this one. But yeah, no, they absolutely loved it. They watched it. They loved it. Although my mum did say she thought it was a bit gory, (laughs) which I thought, okay, that's fair enough. But yeah, no, it's just as weird to see it blow up in popularity. But without any further ado, will we jump into why this show is so successful? Let's go for it. Okay, and before we do, as always, we will be right back after these messages from our very favourite VIPs. Welcome to Chatsunami, a variety podcast that talks about topics from gaming and films to streaming and general interests. Previously on Chatsunami, we discussed Game of the Decade, Deadly Premonition, the romantic thriller Birdemic, and listen to us get all sappy as we discuss our top five Christmas films. If that sounds like your cup of tea, then you can find us on Anchor, Spotify, YouTube, and all good podcast apps. As always, stay safe, stay awesome, and most importantly, stay hydrated. We are Beer and Chill Podcast. Podcast where we review TV shows, games, movies, and whatever else takes our fancy. So what are you waiting for? If you're a cool kid like us, you're gonna listen to the Beer and Chill Podcast. You can get it anywhere from Spotify all the way to your grandmother's radio. My name is Jan. And I'm Craig C. And we are Beer and Chill. And thank you once again to the VIPs for bringing us those messages. So, yeah, let's dive into Squid Game. Before we talk about the good and bad points and a particular episode that you and I are absolutely chomping at the bit to actually get to, what were your first impressions of this show? It certainly was very striking. I thought the first episode was really good at, like, hooking me in. Mm Because I I was, like, you know, watching it, I was like, well, I really want to see this. I want to see how this plays out. It gives you you a really good cast of characters. You You might not necessarily like them all yeah. <laughs> at the beginning but it at least gives you like a defined set of people that you you, you know like you, you can identify and you want to see what happens to them so yeah I thought it was a really good like at first seeing it I was really drawn into it and I just thought wow this does feel like something a bit different you know, to my usual fare. I completely agree with you. I think that the characterization was done fantastically and it really, like, drew you into the struggles of these characters because that's the thing with... And again, I'm... <laughs> I'm putting my card down. I am not like an avid K drama fan or anything. Because you know, there's obviously there's different like genres within it. But for like a lot of the shows that I've seen in the past, whether it's action or whatever, it takes like a while for the gears to kind of start rolling. It's the same with any other Netflix show. Like, have you ever watched a Netflix show that everyone's been raving about and it just it takes ages for it to go anywhere? I feel I must have I must admit um, I'm blanking. <laughs> I'm not always the best at following popular trends, but I'm, I mm-hmm. must have. 
Like, I, mm-hmm. I can't believe I haven't. I mean, there will be a couple, but like, yeah, the, the, there are shows that, like, especially me, like, again, I can't think of any off the top of my head either, but there have been, like, shows where I've watched it and thought, okay, this is going nowhere. Just click off, you know. I'm not watching. I'm not wasting my time. Like, one of our mutual friends, I, I'm not going to say he's bad for it, but he's very much in the camp of, oh, this show gets good after the, I don't know, 50th season or something, just if you stick with it. And you think, yeah, no, no there's no way. When I... will people learn that that is the worst argument for, like... Because <laughs> you hear this about games so often. Yeah. It's like, oh, if you put 30 hours in, it gets really good. When are people learn that is, like, the worst argument you can use <laughs> to get somebody into something? There are some minor exceptions, but, like, there's a reason why they're minor exceptions, because they're few and far between. <laughs> I... It's probably true you know it's mm-hmm. probably true it probably does get good after it but like as an actual argument for somebody to watch or play something it is the worst yeah oh absolutely i mean there are shows that i've seen that are like hour long 18 episode seasons or even worse like 24 or something and you're just sitting there fast forward and thinking right okay get to the point get to the point and i think that is one of the strengths of this series because it's only got nine episodes to tell a self-contained story and something i found interesting as well is the episodes aren't the same length. Have you noticed that? They do vary, don't they? Yeah, like episode 8 especially, that's only about 32 minutes long, oh, compared wow. to like the one before it, which is like 40 odd minutes, which uh, it's just as weird seeing that in a show like this, because usually you'd expect it to be very, you know, consistent and yeah. very much like, we're going to be 45 to 50 minutes, and I have seen shows like that where I'm just like, oh, this is, this is far too long. But I think the show definitely knows when to cut its losses like it doesn't drag on and say for the most part it doesn't drag on and say oh this is what we're gonna do and yeah yeah. it is good at that it's good at kind of telling a short and succinct like story well I wouldn't say succinct but definitely a short enough story that keeps you hooked throughout the entire thing and it does leave you a lot of breadcrumbs to kind of pick on like enough mystery to keep you intrigued rather than just saying oh yeah everything's kind of wrapped up in a neat bow which it is technically but but before we go into you know like our good and bad points i just want to warn everyone that we will be going into spoiler territory from now on and you probably have seen the memes you've probably seen the jokes online and things but if you are listening to this and you still haven't watched squid game first of all what are you doing go watch squid game in fact pause this episode go watch even the first episode come back if i know sorry watch the full thing <laughs> and then come back and listen to this and and also, if you want to hear, like, a non-spoiler review of this, then you can check out our Chatsu Shorts episode. It's only a 10-minute bite-sized um, review of the show, but if you want to hear our opinions of it, then please feel free to listen to that. But from now on, we're going into full spoiler territory. Let's dive in. So, before we get into the good and bad points of this series, we probably should explain what Squid Game is about. So, Adam, as is probably on brand for Chatsunami, would you like to explain what this show's about? So, uh, this is the game one for me. So, Squid Game is about a contest that takes place involving over 400 pretty desperate individuals, mostly South Koreans, but also there is a there is a North Korean in there, um, who are competing for a large uh, cash prize, a very, in fact, a very, very large cash prize. And what they must do is they have to play six different games, which are, um, say, loosely based around kind of uh, Korean children, oh, but ch- children's games, you know, yeah. Korea, but a lot of them are like, there are like international equivalents of a lot of them. And basically the catch is that if you fail at any of the games then you're killed off and there's it's a very shadowy kind of organization that are running the games and basically it's always the contestants are all these really desperate individuals who are mostly like deeply in debt or like desperately need like a large sum of money for it for some purpose and the whole the show takes the show uh, runs through the whole every all six rounds of the of the games and we see we get to meet these characters and see their struggles and you know watch as watch as the as the contestants get picked off one by one for the amusement of of um a certain uh, group of people no no that's a good summary to me <laughs> <Do I pass? laughs> um yeah that th- this is a question of the um episode does adam pass yes or no um yeah <laughs> 
I'm going to put a big, um, you're the green button in the red X. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, all we need to do now is get uh, 460, oh, sorry, 456 people to listen to this episode and then just vote. Oh, no, sorry, it'll probably be half of that, considering what happens. But you know what? You know what I mean? The heart's there. <laughs> Somewhere. I don't know where, but the heart's there. But yeah, yeah no, you're completely right. It follows the struggles of several very desperate individuals who are there because of their financial woes. And I honestly think that that's one of the strongest parts of the show. And I I feel as if this is something that has been explored in like similar things like Parasite, especially recently. The ideas of like, you know, kind of class struggles and, you know, the social inequality and things. And you see people, this is something I loved about it. It's the fact that you saw like so many different people in the Squid Games or in Squid Game. Like it wasn't just all of these people were like, you know, down on the luck and well, they were down on the luck considering what happens. But what I'm trying to say is it's not like they were all from similar backgrounds. There was reasons. Like as you pointed out before, there's a woman who just wants to get enough money to get her mother out of um, North Korea. There is a gangster who just wants the money because he has been filling his own pockets with his boss's cash. <laughs> so he needs to find a way to repay him. We have the man, the myth, the compulsive gambler himself, Gion, who is the pretty much the main character I want to say like the focus of the story is mainly told through his eyes for the most part there's like a couple of diversions but yeah for the most part it's told through his eyes you know you've got his childhood friend Sang Woo who did you know he went to Seoul National University (laughs) the only apparently the only man to ever go to the Seoul University business school exactly because I didn't know he went to Seoul National University (laughs) yeah that that is something that definitely comes up far too much but you know, it's like it shows you all these different backgrounds is what I'm getting at. Of course, you've got Ali as well, which I have to admit, I was surprised by his inclusion in it in like a very good way. Like, what did you think about that? So it was a real surprise because again, not not knowing, speaking for myself here, not knowing much about like South Korea and it's sort of like um, it's ethnic makeup. Like, you know, it was it was really interesting to see uh, a character like Ali and get a look into like um, kind of the demographics of South Korea. So yeah, it was really, it was really surprising, but really good, uh, really good uh, inclusion because i think I, w- I was watching like behind the scenes stuff just about the show itself and th- that's what they were saying that they were finding it like really difficult to find like someone who wasn't korean but could speak like fluent korean at the same time and they managed to get ali's actor who apparently is like really fluent in korean and he was able to like come on the show and things it adds a lot i think to the show because again it kind of like emphasizes that point of it's just everybody in this huge melting pot of desperation this idea that nobody or that that's really one of the central themes isn't it the idea of equality yeah and I, I'm saying that in kind of the most twisted way possible but like equality in terms of the games themselves you know it's like it doesn't matter like where they're coming from the main thing is that they're coming for the same prize they all want the money to make their lives better and of course <laughs> well they don't realize what the actual game is and oh oh boy they they get quite the fright. The old whoopsie doodle, dare I say, as soon as they realise what's going on. And I mean, this show does get brutal, doesn't it? It's not afraid to, like, shy away from certain things like that. No, the, viol- the violence is, is very much to the forefront, and yeah, it is it is very brutal. Yeah, and, and that that's, like, a consistent thing, basically throughout the, throughout the whole thing. I mean, it is, like, a very, like, visceral... <laughs> experience yeah. isn't it? like uh, if you're not into violence and gore and that kind of well I wouldn't say it's necessarily gory like there is one scene kind of more of a subplot where it's revealed that some of the guards are harvesting organs I think that's probably the goriest it gets probably yeah that, that, that probably is yeah like don't get me wrong that is still gory but I wouldn't say it's like saw level scory. One thing I'll say is that the violence in in Squid Game never seems gratuitous. Like it, it 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 serves a purpose, and I think to an extent it is necessary. You know that that might put some people off, and no, that's fair enough. If that isn't, if it's not your thing, then it's not your thing. But for me, anyway, watching it, I never felt like it was an unnecessary level of. It was just there for like. Well, it, it is shocking, but it's not there for just pure like shock value. 
if that makes sense. I, I mean, it doesn't seem as if it's overblown. Like, uh, that's the thing. In a lot of these games, usually they're just, like, taken out and just shot in the head. You know, it seems like a very quick death. Yeah. You know, like, once you get eliminated, because they could have easily gone down the kind of saw route where it's like, oh, if you lose the game, then you're taken to, like, a dark room and tortured or something, or, you know, like, unspeakable things happen. Like, they, they really just shoot them, and that's it. You know, it's like, that's the end of it. They don't kind of... I mean, there's one or two exceptions where, like, some people survive, and I think that's, like, quite shocking, where it's like, you think, oh, someone's still alive, but because they've been eliminated from the games, they're still going in that coffin. It's still getting incinerated. It's like, oh boy, oh boy, this, um... <laughs> this is awkward. But can I just say, like, how visually... Well, I, I don't know if stunning is the right word, but just how visually impressive this show is. I don't know, maybe this is just me saying it through rose-tinted glasses, but did you feel as if... See the real world, and I mean, it's all in the real world, but you know when they're outside of the games? Mm -mm. Did you ever feel as if the colour palettes and things were quite dim? Oh, definitely. Like, like I mean, I, I think that's one of the great... I, I actually would use stunning to describe mm -hmm. the visual of this and you're completely right like it is when, whenever they're in the quote unquote real world outside of the games it is very dark a lot of it's shot at night as well yeah. a lot of it's dark and it's very dingy and you know the, the, the places they're living in are, are quite like you know dirty and like mm. dank and you know like but then when you go into the when you go into like a lot of elements of the game there's a lot of like kind of clean sterile well to begin with at least anyway yeah. you know kind of sterile and there's a great like kind of central chamber which is all these stairs painted these different colours and it, it, it's mm. based off Oh, that MC Escher painting. I forgot what it's called now, but it's the one with like the stairs that are all going like different direct on, on like some are like right way up, some are like upside down, some are on their side. I can't remember the name of the painting at all, but it's, it's a, you'd know it if you saw it. And it's based on that's a really stunning environment. I think what really works well in this film is the color, like a lot of the colors they use, especially so like all the contestants are in this kind of like turquoisey green, um, these turquoisey green jumpsuits, while like the kind of guards and like staff running the games are all in this like kind of like hot pink. Mm -hmm. And they're like very striking colours together. And then as well, like a lot of the sets as well are, are fantastic. Not just like the staircase, but a lot of like where the games take place are really cool environments. And I think one thing to this credit for this show is they didn't use much special, they didn't use much like special effects or CGI. For the most part, it is real sets. And in fact, that all that like they actually got like, so the first game involves 456 people and there are 456 actors there. You know, there's no like kind of like digital cloning to like enlarge a crowd. It's all real people and it gives us this kind of scope and mm. the scale that I think is really impressive and I mean going back to what you said about the I guess the lobby you would call it I remember seeing that for the first time and just I, I was actually taken aback at how impressive it looked because that, this is one of the things I do love about this show it's the kind of I guess juxtaposition is maybe the right word you know between yeah. like the seriousness of the nature it's all these adults that are all desperate and they're going into literal children's games but then there's like so many brutal consequences of that so you've got like bright and colourful you know environments you've got you know just just it seems like this kind of world something that you would probably see in like an 80s Disney film <laughs> <laughs> where it's like the kid that grows up a bit like big you know <laughs> where yeah. it's like the kid that kind of grows up and it's like oh um you know a kid in a candy store or whatever you know i'm in this like huge playground think richie rich but more guns it, it's like this kind of childhood dream but then it's contrasted severely with this just visceral brutal violence of them getting shot getting dropped from a height actually twice they get dropped from a height shot in the head twice like just that kind of you know that whiplash of oh my god look at the colours to oh my god it's red now and I, I think that's done brilliantly it just shows the kind of like warped mentality and what I loved as well and you're going to hear me say that a lot in this you know so apologies but what I loved as well was the kind of like dangling of the carrot theme because I know the director is very like vocal about saying this is like a is deconstruction the right word or kind of like a critique of capitalism 
both, I think. Yeah. It's like this kind of critique of saying, you know, or rather showing these people who have been forced into this, like, desperate situation because of their financial worries. And, you know, it is just that it's, like, brutal. But at the same time, these people are saying, oh, but guess what? There's also a clause in it that says that technically, if everybody doesn't want to be there, then you can vote to go out. And that's what happens in the second episode. And I was really surprised at that because I thought the whole show was, oh, it's just going to be in the game, you know, throughout the rest of the show. But it wasn't. They actually get out. And I think that's kind of the sickening thing because a lot of them volunteer to return because they're so desperate and they've got, like, no other options left. They have to return to this, like, absolute hellscape. And I think it's fantastic, like, the way it's done. That kind of desperation and that kind of sickening feeling, almost. Like, did you feel that way? For me, that was, like, the main theme of this was, like, the theme of desperation. And I think it's something that the the show does so well and captures so well of, like, you said that these are people, like, from very different walks of life, but, like, they all have one thing in common that they are absolutely desperate, yeah. you know, for whatever reason it is. And, and the show captures that so well. And you see that and, like, tying back into, as you said, like, I think the real strength, and you said it right at the beginning, is the characters and the actual character development. Those two, those two like, uh, things intersect and tie together so well in that, like, you see these desperate individuals and you see the lengths that they'll go to 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 alleviate their like absolutely ruinous like financial state you know and the depths they'll like they'll they'll go to just just to survive and just to carry on and get another chance to to play the next game and i think that comes across so well and that is the real strength of, of the show i would say and i mean as you were pointing out about the characters like the development of them is absolutely fantastic i, I, I honestly did a that's against sound terrible but for Gion especially i did a complete 180 on how i felt about him i don't know how you felt but at the very beginning i really did not like him i thought he was rude he was abrasive he was horrible to his mother i mean that that's bad enough you know it was wasn't a very good dad like did you feel that way as well i felt exactly the same way because that's how he's portrayed he is like so immature when we we first meet him you know he's so immature and irresponsible and you i don't you know i don't think you're meant to like him yeah when you, when you first meet him he really is like he really is like not it doesn't seem like a nice person at all but like we get to see so much more and what i think was so good about the show was it, it actually built very layered characters mm-hmm. you know there are people who do pretty awful things in this but for the most part and this is how i feel anyway i don't think that you can fully hate oh there's one character there's one like the gangster character who you, you don't oh, really yeah. have empathy for but that that's fine i would say for most of the other main characters though even some of them that do like really despicable things and i'll point at my favorite character in the show is sang Wu, and like he does some pretty awful things yeah. <laughs> especially as the show as the as like the game can, goes on and they get towards the later rounds he starts like doing really really horrible despicable things but i could never fully hate him because I could completely see why he was doing these things, where he was coming from. And I think that's a real strength of the show in that as much as I was angry at what he did and I was like shocked by it, I was like, well, you know, like I can't fully condemn him because I'm pretty sure a lot of people would probably resort to that if they found themselves in that situation. And his character is the one that stands out so much because a lot of them, a lot of the, the contestants in the show are from like the kind of lower, lower strato society thing. But Sangwoo is, as we, as we joke about, he is like, you know, he's uh, he's gone to like the National University and, you know, he's like one of the top, he's one of the top students there and he was yeah. a great like <laughs> businessman and everything. And then he's just like, like, like Ji Jiyun, uh, is of, is a gambler is a gambling addict and so is Sang Wu but just in like a very different sense he's made some terrible investments and owes an absolute like absolutely ridiculous amount of money and you know in the process of his investments he's like you know he's used his he's used his mother's home and his mother's shop as collateral so he's like not only destroying his own life but also like you know the life of his family and so he desperately needs this money to like right these wrongs and so everything he did like I just couldn't back of my mind was always oh you know I can see why. And that, that's why I thought it was such a strength of the show. Like, just to, to, to make these characters, to make them do horrible things, but you can never, like, fully, you know, turn on them because they are human beings. They feel like real kind of characters. I mean, I think he hit the nail on the head there. It's kind of ironic in a way because later on you find out the whole show has been run by this kind of, like, rich, shadowy cabal, really, to borrow a phrase from you <laughs> from the last episode, but it is. 
is, isn't it? You know, it's just these like rich people who just want entertainment. But the kind of ironic thing is, like, I'm, I'm not saying we are, you know, rich people who would organise death games, but more the fact that we are the ones that are kind of watching this unfold. And it's easy enough for us to kind of sit here and go, or not us in particular, but, you know, for people to say, oh, if I was in the Squid Game, I would do this or that. Or, you know, kind of in hindsight. Yeah. You know, it's like complete Captain Hindsight of, oh, if I was in, I would do this or that. But that's the thing, though. You have to factor in that kind of element of human nature. Yeah, that kind of fight or flight, adrenaline getting pumped into them. You don't know how you would react. You don't know, like, whether you would be a good person, whether you'd be an absolute abomination of nature, you know, whether you'd be like Sang Woo <laughs> or Dok Su, you know, the gangster. You, you just don't know. It's it's just that kind of complexity. And that is something I think the show does. I, I agree. It does it absolutely fantastically. It's definitely a strength that they build on throughout and they just layer the characters. I do agree though there are one or two characters that kind of fall into stereotype territory. Like excluding the VIPs because I know we'll get on to them but more so for like the you know like the villains of the piece. Yeah. Dok Su and is it Han Ming Yo? The, his quote unquote girlfriend <laughs> for all of five minutes. Yeah I think that's her name isn't it? Other than them I mean don't get me wrong she's quite complex in a way in the sense that she's just a con artist but the rest of them I don't know there's definitely people in there that you know are there to be (laughs) killed off let's just say. Like, you can see them a mile off, you're just like, this is not gonna go well. But I, I do think the characters are just fantastic. And I mean, as well with, like, Sebiok, who's the um, North Korean defector in the show, I mean, she was fantastic as well. Apparently, she, before she came on to Squid Game, like, outside the show, she was, like, a model, and that was, like, one of the director's requests that he wanted kind of no-name, not celebrities, but he wanted no name actors coming into it and I think this was her first role yeah she does a phenomenal for, for that being her first role she does a phenomenal job and that is that that's another one of the best characters I think is, is hers uh, sorry what's is her name Sang uh, oh, Sebiok I think Sebiok and she gives such a great nuanced performance mm-hmm. as a character who like you don't as the series goes on you learn just a little bit more about each time and just the mm-hmm. character unfolds yeah and you get the whole story and it's so well done like it's it's another strength of the show and by the end of it you are you're just like your heart's breaking for most of them not Doc Sue. He, he can he can fall off a bridge ha 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 see it's funny because it happened it's something I actually didn't notice but somebody like somebody brought it up as like a theory to or not a theory so much as more foreshadowing about what would happen to these characters like this is definitely one of those shows that you have to like go back and watch and then pick apart like the wee easter eggs for example I didn't realise that see the more the room opened up like the more players died the less beds obviously there would be in the room but the less beds there were the less it would obstruct the walls and on the walls are all the games that they're going to yeah. play oh, it's just so clever I, I thought wow that's amazing but one of the other things as well that someone had brought up and I think this is more of a fan theory but the idea that a lot of the fates are kind of foreshadowed yeah yeah. Like, for example, Dok Su, before he returns to the game, he jumps off a bridge to escape his captors. And of course, that's how he falls to his death later on. With Sang Wu, he ends up getting stabbed, or rather, he stabs himself. Like, in a previous scene, he stabs Sebiok, you know, to, I don't want to say level the playing field, because I'm still angry at that scene. <laughs> but, you know, like, kind of things like that. There's a lot in there. I mean, the same with Ali being too trustworthy and and then, yeah, that essentially becomes his downfall. Again, we'll get to that because I know you squid fans out there <laughs> will know like what we're talking about here. But yeah, I just think it's great. I think it loops like together just so perfectly. Before we move on to the bad points, is there anything else you would like to kind of point out? Or I think the only the only quick thing I'd say is I actually love I love the games themselves oh, with yeah. one exception which we'll come on to there's one that I don't like but the other five I think are really really good and I think I think they're really they, they do that they film them and shoot them so well yeah. to get to 
attention. I think the the Durham Adore or Red Light Green Light one in the first episode is fantastic. It's such a great like such a great one to get the thing going to get everything started. Yeah. Like even the the simple ones like the the one with the the, the honeycomb where they have to cut the shapes out. Like something so simple is is done so well. And I really enjoyed the tug of war as well. Like especially when the, um, the old man O Il Nam mm. is like breaking down the strategy yeah. of, of how to, like win a tug of war. I thought was fantastic. And the glass the glass bridge that mm. that is that is excellent as well. So I really really enjoyed all the games with one exception i mean the only other thing i'd say as well and i'm gonna fit this in before we go into the bad points like the lukewarm point i would bring in that i'm kind of conflicted about is the role of the detective see on the one hand and i brought this up in the chat so shorts episode but on the one hand i love the fact that he was like the eyes like as i said before gion is like the perspective for the players whereas the detective who his name's like blanking on me now apologies but he is like the eyes in the side of the staff if that makes sense you know it's like he's the one who gives us the perspective of what's going on you know they don't just choose like a random guard they just choose someone who's been established in I think episode 2 and his like main role was just finding his brother which uh, I don't want to say it's overly predictable but there is a lot you learn about the games through his eyes which I really like and some other bits it kind of drags on but I wouldn't say it drags on to the detriment of the show fair I'd agree like I, I totally agree the best bits are when you get to see behind the scenes yeah of the game and everything that's the best bits of his it just doesn't have the most satisfying payoff yeah I think the thing the thing about it as, as you're kind of alluding to that's the, I think the big strike against it but I, I, I agree that it doesn't it's not it doesn't detract from mm-hmm. the overall quality because the thing that I did or rather one of my favourite bits or reveals that came out of it was the fact that the games had been running since maybe even further back but it at least since the year 2000 Mm-mm, and I yeah. thought wow that it just showed you how jarring it was that like 456 people a pop like coming in all to win you know the prize of 45.6 billion won which I think this is one of the memes that went around of everyone trying to calculate how much that was but I think in British pound sterling that's about just over 28 million pounds give or take which is a lot of money granted but I I don't know if it's worth it. (laughs) That's all I'm saying. Well, desperation but you know on that note will we just will we just slip into the negatives of it green light let's talk about the negative points i'm gonna pass it to you once again to kick us off you were saying that there was a particular game that you didn't like i like all of the games except for the very final squid game honestly i found like so the squid so it builds up the round six is is the eponymous squid game which i'm going to be honest i don't fully understand the rules yeah, <laughs> same. but you have basically it basically involves an attacker and a defender and the attacker has to make it to like around the squid this kind of shape is like a shape that's drawn on the ground and we see it right at the beginning and like jihun tells us like right at the beginning that this was the game that he played a lot when he was a kid and he was really good at it which is when it got to the final bit and it's jihun versus sangwoo i was like well clearly jihun's gonna win this because this is his game yeah well that took away the suspense i don't know as well like it was just shot the way it was shot it was kind of like done a lot of slow-mo and the rain is always rain pouring down and i don't know like it took away a lot of the kind of realism and the tension that I felt the other games had and it became a very stylistic thing and I was just a bit like oh, this just kind of feels being a bit dragged out now I don't it's weird because I, I don't like there was one particular thing I can say is why I don't like it but it just felt like a kind of unsatisfying ending game for me so yeah like I don't know I just remember watching it and being almost a little bit bored and just being like okay Let's, let's end this now. You know, we, we know Jihun's going to win, so come on. Yeah. Let's go. I mean, not only that, not only do we get like a John Woo level performance, because let's face it, doves should have been flying above them. Yeah. And yeah totally. But we've also got one of the VIPs who, as we said before, is um, Chinese. And yeah, he says like some Mandarin proverb. Oh, yeah. And again, it's like building on what you're saying about it almost doesn't feel real. It's like it's perfectly like... Was that was that VIP just saving that proverb up? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you just wait for the moment. Yeah, like, it, right. You went and you went to a proverb to drop a proverb. I mean, what was the pro? I don't know. It was something to do with heavy rain, wasn't it? <laughs> It was something like it was something one of those things that you're just like that's just too perfect. Yeah, that that's when you kind of thought, mm, okay, yeah, that's 
<laughs> that is a bit much. Okay, I can I can understand that. It felt as if it was quite. I don't want to say manufactured. That's the wrong word, but it did seem a bit over the top. And something that I was a bit confused at as well was. Like, I, I don't know personally, because obviously Squid Game is not a thing in the UK, and I doubt it's in Europe as well. Like, for any European listeners, or this side of the world, like, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't even think in Korea Squid Game's, like, that popular. Like, I feel as if it's, like, a particular area. And I mean, I could be, like, well off the mark here, but it doesn't seem as if it's, like, something that... It, it just seems like a very weird and specific thing they put in. Yeah. Because I don't know if that's, like, so, of course, this is one of the major spoilers, so please feel free to cover your ears. But it's revealed that one of the players, number one, Oh Il Nam, is one of the VIPs. And maybe it's because that was one of his games growing up. I don't, I'm assuming it's something to do with him. Because I yeah. doubt it's any of the other VIPs. I doubt any of them knew what a Squid <laughs> Game was. Like, I, I, I don't believe any of them were like, oh yeah, Squid Game. Yeah, it's definitely Il Nam that had a say in it. Well, we talk about about the VIPs while we're on the subject. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of flows kind of naturally into that. Yeah, because oh, let's face it, I, th- I think everybody like universally agrees that they're the weakest part of this show. Yeah. So it's like episode seven or eight, I want to say. It's quite late on in the series where the VIPs are introduced and they're brought into the game. Or not into the game, but to observe the game firsthand. So they're all watching it at home, you know. And again, this is linking back to what I was saying before. It's almost like we are the VIPs watching like these people commit these things and then all of a sudden they're airlifted in and they have these weird like animal masks made of solid gold and it's like, this is a bit strange. Is this like the, I don't want to say like it's the next like gathering of like like a rainforest or something, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it, it almost felt like that. You're know, like, uh, what? What is it? At least it would have been rainforest. <laughs> exactly. You're kind of like. What is that? What what's going on here? Why the animal masks? And this is coming from someone who has a red panda as an avatar. Like what what's going on here? They were very stereotypical in every single scene they were in. Like for example, there is a very infamous scene where the oh boy, can't wait to talk about this one. There's a very infamous one where it's the I want to say American slash rich Texan. Yeah. One of the Americans, there's a couple there. Yeah, he bets on number six. 69, one of the players, and he gets asked by one of the other VIPs, why 69? And you know, he, he, he swirls his wine, he goes, oh, well, you know, 69, it's it's a beautiful number. And they're all like, ha ha, you dog. And you're like, what? Really? Is this how people like think we all talk, or rather Americans talk? <laughs> like, 69, nice. You know, like, no, we don't. <laughs> but I think you brought up an interesting point about that, didn't you? Oh, uh, yeah, about the dialogue in it. Yeah. 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 Their dialogue does sound a bit off, and that's apparently because it was written by the the, the, the Korean like production team who made Squid Game. So none of them are obviously native native English speakers, and so it was kind of written. The dialogue was written in Korean and then sort of awkwardly translated into English, and it was never sort of changed. And then the actors were just given the script, and that's the lines that they they kind of like you know said. So it, that's why it sounds a bit off. And I think that's why as well it kind of adds to this. It kind of like you know lowers the quality a bit, but not not that that's not not to blame you know the Korean production staff. It's not their fault. They're not native English speakers. You know it's yeah. just just one of those things. Um, but yeah, like I think tying into that, I think another kind of like criticism I would level against Squid Game is that like I don't think it's like rich versus poor commentary mm-hmm. is particularly nuanced or good yeah. like to us it kind of when the ultra rich people showed up i was like well of course like, <laughs> you know, it's like just it's just like standard now isn't it whenever there's one of these shows it's always ultra rich men like you know usually wearing some kind of weird mask showing up to like you know to bet on the poor um, and i was like oh i don't know like I, for me like the theme of like desperation was a far more effective thing that the show yeah. did and i get as like i understand like there is like stuff like a kind of critique or like deconstruction of, of capitalism and some of it's done well but i i, I found that kind of rich versus poor thing to be not that effective i think so, like something like parasite mm-hmm. stick on the kind of k media parasite does it far better in a much more nuanced way and is a far more interesting commentary i think than this is i'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this actually mm-hmm. but one other thing that i did not like in this is i did not like the oil nam reveal at the end i uh, don't know how you feel 
feel. I was conflicted by that because I, so- and again, we will get on to that episode, but I sobbed buckets at that episode. And exactly. I, w- I was a wreck. You know that meme image where it was like, lie down, try not to cry, cry anyway. That was me three times. I sobbed three times. Even after I knew the reveal, I was sobbing. I, I was a wreck. I was a mess. I was crying into my partner's arms. I was crying into my family's arms. I was crying alone. I'm very conflicted because on the one hand, I thought, oh, that is like a very weird reveal or very like, you know, oh, it's a twisted reveal. The thing that kind of confused me and that's something that everyone else brought up was he could have easily died. And I get that as kind of the point that he wanted that, like, he was going out anyway, so he wanted, like, that one last hurrah before he went out, but it seemed a bit needless, like, thank God he got put out in the marble game, because can you imagine if he got put out in tug of war? I know, in bad shape or something like that in the in the honeycomb. Yeah, exactly, he would have been screwed, and you'd be like, oh, okay, whoops. Interestingly, though, there is, like, a little Easter egg that if you go back to the Durham at all mm-hmm. uh, red light, green light scene, it's very quick, but, you know, when you, like, so basically that game involves like it's got like an animatronic doll Mm -hmm. that like looks away and it goes green light and then you know you have like yeah you're allowed to run but when it says red light you have to stop and then Mm -hmm. the doll has a lot of sensors that pick up any kind of movement and the Mm -hmm. people who are moving get shot if you look if you look at one one of the scenes from the doll's eye oh well no it doesn't actually get picked up by it Mm -hmm. so every like flashing over everybody else like doing the green but he's just like blank so obviously the doll is programmed not to not to like up on that one um, but like I don't know what would happen in the other games as you say mm-hmm. like I don't like, I don't know if he got a special honeycomb that like <laughs> the shape wouldn't break or I don't know but like yeah I think he would have got taken out by like like in the honeycomb he probably would have got taken to another room or something and quote unquote shot but yeah the other ones yeah there was no way he would be surviving that at all but th- that's the thing you're, you're completely right about the shock of, and like mm-hmm. this kind of links back to when we were talking about the violence and how the violent the like the violent nature of this doesn't feel like just there for shock value honestly this reveal felt just there for shock value i don't see what i don't think it adds anything to the show and the more i think about it the more i think it detracts because as you say it completely undoes a lot of the great work done in episode six especially with jihun's it's almost like jihun gets a free pass yeah. for like being really deceitful and being pretty horrible and like taking advantage because oh mm-hmm. nam is character the old man apparently like i think I, I don't think he has dementia but he pretends to have dementia am i right yeah yeah because they're playing marbles basically and jihun and, like takes advantage of that to like you know basically convince him like oh no, no I won that round and stuff mm-hmm. like that so that he won't get killed which again is another thing that you can completely under as much as a horrible action like mm-hmm. you can totally see why he's doing that but I felt that kind of got like he got a pass for that Jihun at the end because it's like oh well the old man was deceiving him so it's yeah. fine that he just I didn't like that it undercut that I mean it is a pretty big reveal yeah. that he was like a mastermind throughout the entire thing you're like uh, yeah I'm kind of conflicted like I like it well enough enough but no I do agree like it, it completely conflicts with how I felt in episode 6 yeah like episode 6 is just such a gut punch of an episode it's one of my favourite in fact it's my favourite of the series but it's one of my favourites I think I've ever seen and I don't know if and again I don't want to like stereotype like the medium entirely but it is something I have noticed in a couple of like in terms of like Korean dramas themselves where there is on, there is always like one character like usually it's the villain of the piece like you know sometimes they come across as being quite pantomime and again it's not like I'm not like saying oh oh Korean dramas are like this or anything no no not at all it's obviously it's up to the discretion of the you know the writers the directors so we get that here as well you know there's so many like I mean going back to an example I brought up Money Heist as much as I love that that's the way that kind of show went (laughs) where like a lot of the people who initially were very nuanced and had like very complex backgrounds just turned into cartoon characters and it's like, haha, I'm evil and I've got five guns and it's like, wait, what? But you know, like, for this, it did seem like there was a lot of kind of stereotypes, I want to say, like, especially with Doc Su. Like, obviously you yeah. needed that kind of antithesis, but I think the thing that really hurt the most about Il Nam's betrayal, as it were, was more the fact that they had such a good rapport with one another. You know, you had Gion, who, at the very beginning, he was, he, he was selfish, but he wasn't a monster you know like don't get me wrong he was kind of thoughtless like with his daughter or rather he gave her the present which did you notice that like maybe this is a coincidence but I'm not sure when he gave over the present to her it was wrapped in a black box with like exactly ribbon. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah 
as the coffins. Yeah, exactly the same. Well, maybe like gold ribbon instead of red or pink, whatever it was. But yeah, like small things like that, you think, oh, that's clever. And another thing as well with Il Nam is when he bumps into Gion. I don't know, they're like drinking together and they're eating. And apparently in the background, if you look closely, you can see a white van or silver van. You know, the vans that take them to the island. Oh, nice. There's like... Yeah, there's like a van behind him as well, which I thought was really fascinating. I thought that was really a nice touch. So there's a lot of interesting tidbits like that. And the fact as well, this is something I didn't bring up in like the goods points, but it's going back to what you were saying about thinking of the desperation. That whole like narrative <laughs> really just falls flat, doesn't it? Like there's not really anything for it to stand on. It's more like there's not a strong enough antagonist, if you know what I mean, that they're just rich people. They're just there to be rich. And it's watch. more like, it's kind yeah. of what you expect. You know? Uh-huh. But the thing, like, that was quite interesting in terms of the desperation was that they had them numbered. So, again, this is something that, like, you, you definitely see in the promotional material. You have Gion, who has number four, five, six. Il Nam has um, number one, which, again, that's a callback of he's number one, you know, he's the head on troll kind of thing. But at the same time, it showed, like, the parallels as well. And I know that's kind of an obvious point to, like, pick out, but, you know, it's like, Although they were both at the opposite end of the spectrum, they were both like learning about one another, they were both kind of coming together to work with one another, and then by the end of it, they were again like at the opposite ends of the game, you know, with Il Nam believing solely that humanity was buggered, <laughs> whereas, you know, Gion still had that little bit of faith left in people. It was that was really well done, but I, I, I do agree to kind of undo that at the end. I don't know, it, it was just a bit disappointing. And speaking of disappointing, just to briefly touch on like a point we talked about earlier how, how did you feel about the reveal of the detective's brother like i mean it, again it was like a bit of a shock mm-hmm. but again i don't really like i don't know it didn't really add much like mm-hmm. i feel i don't know i feel for the way it was like if they maybe went a different direction with it like that might have been like you know that might have been something like maybe if the games were like run by like you know if the games were run by like former winners or something maybe mm-hmm. that would be a more maybe not I don't know but I don't know it just kind of felt like there and it was like oh that's him yeah. okay mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know like yeah I, again it again it was that instant shock but then I'm like oh does this really change much not really no I completely agree it does feel as if it's like there you know it's like I'm here because I'm looking for my brother and it's like okay. I don't want to sound bad, but it, I wasn't really invested in his character. Yeah. You know, like, he was just there to provide another perspective of the show. And I liked him for that. But anything beyond that, it was kind of just like, oh, he's there. With, can I just say, the world's best phone. It, <laughs> it, it didn't get a signal, but my God, that battery lasted days. I mean, <laughs> what was in that battery? Like, I think in, like, episode three or four or, like, the first time he's typing, he's only got, like, 37 battery yet somehow that lasts him like the whole <laughs> the whole time he's there to the extent that when he does get wi-fi his phone's still going and it's like how how are you how, what is your phone made of honestly like apple or samsung or whoever like made that phone i think it is an apple phone but wh- whoever that phone's supposed to belong to they, they should really cash in on that because <laughs> <laughs> that battery's amazing. I completely agree. There, there was just really nothing there, was there? Yeah, it's just again, it's just again like a reveal. It feels like a reveal for the sake of a reveal. I'm just trying to think. Is there anything else like that struck you? That because I mean, overall, it is a great show. But was there anything else that struck you wasn't as strong or could have been better? The only other thing I'd say is that after after the masterpiece that is episode six, I felt there was a kind of the show never quite got back to that again. Oh, absolutely. The last the last three episodes and they're not bad episodes yeah. it's just that like it hit such a peak that like it just I don't know I was always like oh that was that was good but it wasn't episode six yeah. so again like maybe that's an unfair that's like an unfair criticism it almost did too well <laughs> like, yeah. you know it did so well that I was like oh no you've almost ru- not ruined yourself but you know yeah. like that's the only thing the only other thing I'd probably level at it absolutely 100% I-, I was in the same boat I thought this show's incredible I was sobbing I was like where's it gonna go from here and then afterwards I was like eh, I think I'd spent all my energy I was just like I've got I've got no more tears left to cry 
<laughs> Even by the end of it, you know, when Gion somehow like adopts a North Korean boy from an orphanage <laughs> with bright red hair, I, I I still don't understand that. Like, I, I don't know if it's like a culturally significant thing or it's just like an artistic thing because people were saying because his hair's red, red is obviously like a colour of like impulsiveness and passion, which fits Gion perfectly. Like, it's not an important thing. Uh, that's more of a nitpick, but it, ju- it just seems like it could have been something that they st- they spend like a minute saying, ah yes, red. <laughs> or sorry, they get the other VIP in. Well, you know, red. <laughs> it's a fine colour. Oh, you dog. You know, like, I, I don't know. I genuinely. It was striking. That's all I'm saying. It was a yeah. very, <laughs> it was a very striking colour. <sighs> yeah. But is there anything else you could think of? Or... I mean, th- this is, this is, this is a little bit of a nitpick. It's, somebody, somebody, it's not something that I think Squid, Squid Game doesn't just do this. A lot of other shows and films and media have done mm. this. But there is that bit where like the main character is kind of saved by quote unquote divine intervention during the, the very first game of Dharma Doll where basically ji about to like fall flat on his face mm. and, and get shot. But then Ali, uh, the character's like, grabs him mm-hmm. and I still don't quite understand unless I've completely I, mi- I missed it or I've forgotten it just mm-hmm. almost felt, felt like one of these it felt like a twofold thing it felt like number one oh Jihun's our main character so of course he's not going to get like he's not going to get blasted here you know mm-hmm. he's not going to go here and also as well as like as a way to introduce Ali mm-hmm. as a kind of get him involved with the group that's maybe the only other thing I would like nitpick a bit and just say like I don't know like I felt maybe there was a better way mm-hmm. to have done that but it, it's quite a minor thing it's not mm-hmm. really like a not an important issue at the end of the day. The only like counterpoint to that, and I'm not saying you're wrong, by the way, but you totally are. No, I'm joking. <laughs> opinions are available. Yes. <laughs> Other wrong opinions are available. Nah, I'm really kidding. No, you're perfectly right in that. The only, I'm just thinking back to like a fan theory that I read, or not a fan theory, but more like a, well, more a speculation, but th- they were saying how a lot of the characters change over the show. So you know how we're talking about character growth and things like that. And one of the things they pointed out was the fact that Ali seems to be the only one that's consistent throughout. For Sang Wu, you know, initially he tries to be a bit of a team player and then, as you said before, he kind of realises that, well, let's face it, the gravity of the situation and he just becomes a lot more ruthless and brutal and just all around a horrible, horrible man. Gyun kind of tries to do the same, but then he kind of lightens up and becomes a bit more open and things. Ali seems to be the only one that is helpful throughout the whole thing. Like, he, he's immediately wanting to try and pay back Sangwoo for giving him money for the bus yeah. even in the games like he's given over his only source of food to which Sangwoo thankfully is the only nice thing he does is splits it with him which I'm sure makes up for it after his betrayal in episode 6 that's something that he never loses that's kind of his resolve that he is just this person always trying to look for the best of people in a way that's kind of that kind of ties into his characterization of being naive because you see like when he gets introduced later on that he works in this factory that clearly are just exploiting people coming over to work there and he's got a family who come from Pakistan that he's trying to send money, well he's try- he sends his um, wife back with some money that he ends up taking from his boss because the boss wouldn't pay them and you know he just wants them safe and out of the way and he's saying like oh I'll stay behind you know to basically risk his life in this game for his family so he is like this very like <laughs> I suppose if you're thinking of Dungeons and Dragons he's like the paladin of this almost and even when there's like that riot um, scene you know the breakout or not breakout but when the lights turn off and people start shanking one another Ali like dives in there with a huge metal bar and things he dives like right in front of them even after people are saying oh you can't trust so and so because they're going to stab you in your sleep and you know he's the only one that kind of stands up so it is interesting the way they do that but it's just a shame that kind of going back to a point that we were talking about there it's a shame that the antagonists aren't as strong. Even the guards, the guards are kind of funny, but they're just there, you know? Yeah. Especially with the whole subplot with, you know, the doctor and the organ harvesting, like, that kind of goes nowhere, really. Yeah, it's just a, it's a way basically to advance, like, the detective, mm. his, like, search and stuff, really. Yeah. It's not really there for any other purpose. Yeah. 
as you said, it's there. And, and again, like all these points, for the most part, I don't think detracts too much from the show. The only thing I would say is probably the VIPs are the worst of the show. And I don't... Yeah. I know that's kind of a lukewarm opinion, but that does seem to be the case, doesn't it? I would agree with you. I mean, there are other nitpicks, but... I mean, that and, you know, like, this isn't a fault of the show itself, but I, th- I feel as if I have to touch on it. The dubbing of the show is horrendous. Oh, is it? Well, yeah, see, this is the annoying thing, because I watched it first time round in English, and the only reason was because I put it on in the background thinking, you know, I'll just listen to it in the background. And usually I don't like doing that, you Usually I like to, you know, listen to it in its original language, but yeah, I didn't really, and it is honestly, it's very poor. I'll, I'll try and send you a link, <laughs> probably after this, just to show you how bad it is, but it is very much like, you know how the VIPs talk? Yeah. Imagine that throughout the entire show. <laughs> yeah, that that is pretty much it. It's not good. It's kind of expected. It's not a fault of the show. Like, I can't say, oh, Squid Game has terrible voice. That, like, that's not their fault. Um, yeah. Like, did you watch it in the original Korean? Ian. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. I watched it uh, with subtitles. I mean, I prefer doing not to sound like all like uppity, but mm-hmm. <laughs> I do prefer doing that generally. Mm-hmm. Uh, watching like watching it in its original language because well, like I think it just you get more from the acting, don't you? Like oh, yeah. you know, you can actually hear like people's even if you even if you don't like understand like the dialogue, it's like the the words itself. You get more of the performance. It's definitely something that you need like a very good performance with, especially yeah. with some of the scenes and this where you're like they're. they're gut punching at times and the only reason I mean, I'm just going to reiterate this because I don't want people thinking ah sat, so you've watched all these K-dramas I bet you watched them in English as well no I didn't <laughs> I swear to god it's just as I said I, honestly I wasn't expecting much of Squid Game when I first put it on and then that's how it threw me off guard and then the other two times I watched it with people who wanted to watch it in English so it's like ah god damn it so I, I mean I've seen bits of it in the original Korean but I do have to like go back and just blitz through it but from what I saw it was fantastic and I know that's probably the greatest sin of all and yeah before we wrap up well we'll we just go into episode six let's do it let's do it let's get the the grand finale yeah so episode six which is aptly titled ganbu which apologies if i've completely butchered that pronunciation but yeah ganbu is like a best friend isn't it that's how they describe it and yeah it basically focuses on a game of marbles oh it, it is a gut punch it actually reminds me of slight spoilers for another other show that I've watched Alice in Borderland. Have you seen that one? No, no, I've heard of it, but not seen it. I would recommend it. Um, it's similar to Squid Game. It's a bit more sci-fi in a way, but uh, it's very good. It's a similar idea of like a battle royale game kind of thing. Basically, the premise of that show is like a group of like young adults get warped. Kind, I, I think warped is the right word, but they get warped into this like version of I don't know if it's Tokyo or Kyoto or like one of the major cities, and they find that the whole city's been abandoned. But like every so often, they'll come across like a you know like a random person and then they take part in these like death games and each death game kind of corresponds with like a different suit you know clubs hearts spades that kind of thing and there's a particular episode where they have to do a hearts game where basically the hearts game in that show is like a very emotional one it's one where you have to sacrifice something and I I was honestly getting vibes from I'm not saying they copied I'm saying more like it, it felt like that it was that kind of gut punch of realising what the game was about to entail and it was the same with Squid Game where you saw them pair up because they were all very methodical like same with Sang Woo he did the uh, which again I hated him because he was like oh yeah Ali we'll team up because you're the strongest he completely dingies um, Gion saying yeah no Gion we don't want you in our team so he ends up teaming up with the old man and you know they they get together and they're saying ah we're going to be Ganbu and you know we're going to be best friends and the proms tomorrow I'm retiring tomorrow <laughs> little Jimmy's coming back from the war you know that kind of, like every stereotype almost for like leading up to disaster and yeah just that gutting feeling when you hear them say they had to play against their opponent my my heart just sank like did you feel the same when you saw this oh, one? 
it's so it's such a well structured episode. Like mm-hmm. that that reveal is brilliant because I didn't see it coming at all. Mm-hmm. And you know, as you say, like they've all paired up, and there's a husband and wife team there. There's as you say, like Ali and Sang Woo. Oh my god, I forgot her name, but the, the North Korean defector Sang Bayok. S A B O K. I think, yeah, be, yeah. Apologies for butchering these, these names. But she teams up with this other girl, oh, whose name um, has escaped me, this yeah. other kind of young girl who, like, they'd started to, like, almost started to form, like, a kind of friendship, kind of blooming there, and they team up, and then, oh my goodness, is is like, uh, uh, the gangster guy goes with, like, one of his main henchmen, and then, like, because they're like, oh, we're the strongest, we're going to do it, and then, they, and then just when you find they have to compete against each other, that way of it being, like, marbles, and it's just this really simple thing, and it's like, the only rule is, like, you have to get, the other person's 10 marbles you know at the end like there's no like but it's not like you must play this game or whatever and just that kind of like for it was such a great like reveal and just set up such a fantastic episode it's definitely an episode that's going to win you when you watch yeah. it because you just you don't expect what's going to happen you kind of think that, that this is just going to be you know like oh they're going to compete against other people what's going to be great you know Gion and Irnam they're going to they're going to take those marbles and everything and then as soon as they announce it you're like my god this is uh, this is devastating. I can't watch. And as you said, like Sebiok and the other girl that she's with, like both of them, just uh, like all the characters, just have such good chemistry together. I think, with the exception of um, Doc Su, who you know he, he's just there to be the antagonist within the group. He doesn't seem as if he's you know like a well structured you know deep character, but he doesn't need to be. You know they don't all need to be in the same caliber. I mean him and his henchmen. It's so great in that episode mm-hmm. where his henchman's like winning, like they 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 play one year at first. His henchman like basically takes all his marbles like bar one mm-hmm. and just a taunting, and he's yeah. like, ah, oh, and he's just like, yeah, you think I'm an idiot? Like I know like you were gonna sacrifice me, but like I'm gonna knock you out now, and just like all this great stuff, and then because like getting more angry and just raging. Mm-hmm. It's just that, that even that was like I agree, it's not like character development per se. You mm-hmm. know, it's not real emotion, but it was just like a great like you know contest between the two of them. Uh, it was a great contrast <laughs> between. I, th- I think it was quite a good relief compared to what else was going on because you had Sebiok and um, the other girl talking about what they're going to do after they've won the competition and they're kind of fantasising about going to Jeju Island and, you know, they're going to have mojitos and, you know, they're going to have a great time and then they realise that both of them can't make it out in the same game and it's, j- it's just gut-punching and, you know, like the other girl talks about, like, her abusive past and, you know, is saying, what would you do? And then at the end, she sacrifices herself by purposely throwing the game and everything. And I think both of them, both of those actresses were absolutely fantastic. Like, I, I was just like, oh, no, this is heartbreaking to watch. I, <laughs> I can't deal with this. The acting on display in that whole episode was mm-hmm. absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. And it is really feels like the central like character development episode because mm-hmm. we learn so much about these main characters. You know, we get to f- see so much more of like Bayok, much more about her past and like, you know, her motivations. And we see actually like some humanity because she's been a very kind of detached, emotionally cold character. Mm-hmm. But we start to see that kind of mass slip away. And what I love is we see like Sang Woo and Ji Hoon and we'll see what they'll go to. We see like, you know, the desperation again, like in the that they're in and the, the lengths they'll go to to survive survive for for like even against like characters that they've like formed like pretty strong attachments and bonds with like at the end of the day like especially for Sang Wu it's like you know he, he's so goal orientated he, he just he'd like completely deadens himself emotionally and that's sort of his turn you know that's where he's like I'm gonna do whatever it takes I, I'm in this to win it and I'm in it for myself and in terms that you just learn so much but again like I feel you can't well for me something I couldn't like fully criticize these characters because I'm like well you know like they have they have strong motivation to do these things who knows what you'll what anybody would do in a situation like that so I just thought i just thought for everything about that episode was it's honestly like it's honestly the best episode of television i've seen since like some of the episodes in like the second season of fargo Mm -hmm. which is a show that i really really love like i haven't seen a television episode that's gripped me and like just floored me like Mm -hmm. that episode did and the fact that it's just a game or not a game but it's the fact that this is an episode about marbles they're (laughs) they're playing marbles and just between the stakes the characters that are involved as you you brought up before gyu and the neil nam trying to play against one another and Neil Nam is trying to you know pretend that he's got dementia which that absolutely that twist I, th- I think that twist was more impressive to me where it turned out he was pretending the entire time <laughs> rather than you know the twist at the end where it's like oh he's the mastermind you're like uh, really really 
Is that is this the way we're going? Compared to, you know, that that episode was just and I think that's the hardest I cried at that episode. And as you said, it does it does not get any better than episode six. Like not to say the rest of the show's bad, but it's a fact as well that I mean, I I, I got teary eyed about Sabiok's friend who gets shot and sacrifices herself. That was gutting because she says, you know, I've not got anything to come out to, you know, I've got nothing whereas you have your brother, your mum, you know, that you're fighting for and that was depressing and that got me teary eyed. Ali as well realising that he'd be betrayed and considering the fact that he'll never see his family again he won't see his wife his kid and he's just been betrayed all because he put his trust in someone he thought was like this respectable because he always refers to Sangwoo and I don't know if this is because <laughs> I, I'm not laughing at that but like uh, it's because he's you know Seoul's national universities <laughs> like alumni <laughs> representative in the squid game you know but he's like he's keeps referring to him as sir he's very polite and that's his that's his ultimate downfall like I can't remember the channel name I don't know if you've seen this but there's a particular channel on YouTube that goes through these kind of films and uh, TV series like series where you have to survive and for the most part the commentator does say a lot of like not terrible things but you know logical things like step one you have to throw everyone under the bus to survive or something and it's like morally absolutely reprehensible but you can understand why and I think that's the same with like Sangwoo you know it's like you can see why he did it but it doesn't make it any easier seeing his face like just as it gets shot I think the worst like kind of as a closing point the worst moment is when El Nam gives over his last marble which is yeah. used later and it is just it is gut wrenching when he gives it and he hugs him and almost like a father figure he says it's going to be okay and everything and I brought this up before we started recording this episode there's a particular scene for any Friends fans out there there's a particular episode where Joey reads Little Woman and there's a scene where he finds out one of the characters is going to die and he says he's sobbing to his friend and he says oh they all say she's going to be okay but I don't think she's going to be okay and that's exactly how I felt because I told you this before I was watching this with my partner and <laughs> I was sitting there and I was sobbing and I was looking at her and I was saying El Nam said it was going to be okay but I don't think it's gonna be okay. And I, I was just like, did you feel that way when you were watching it with your partner? Oh yeah, like it, it's such like it was honestly we were just speechless for like yeah. the whole like it, towards the end of that episode because it is it's just like it's one gut punch after another. And I think that's why as well I don't like the final Squid Game yeah. because how much emotion and tension was built into this like simple game of marbles? There's no real like stylistic shots and there's no like slow motion and like heavy rain beating down. It's all just pure character it's all character work like done by the actors just like absolutely brilliantly that's why when i got to the final game i was like this just feels like style over substance Mm -hmm. while this game of marvels is all substance and it's all amazing it is a simple episode isn't it yeah it's a simple episode that doesn't need any theatric because that's the thing though it's like although they obviously have the huge set of you know people playing in this kind of old like korean street as it were. It's not as flashy as the other games. Like, they have a literal robot that targets people in the first one. For the second one, well, for the second one, I suppose, it was just them making the honeycomb. But they still had to make loads of it. I mean, Jesus, imagine how long that must have taken. That playground as well, like, you know, with uh-huh. the giant playground equipment. Whereas three, or rather the third game, I mean, Tug of War, although that was simple. Like, that that was, like, suspended over the bridge and it had the big guillotine. Yeah. And I mean, that was, that, that must have taken loads but for that episode episode 6 it was just so simple it was just a game of marbles it's something that I think internationally as well everybody can relate to I'd be kind of hard pressed to think of a place where like nobody knows what marbles are you know yeah like, exactly I mean like for the most part I think and I think at the end of the day that's what grips international audiences because although obviously Squid Game is like Korean you know like the actual Squid Game is Korean a lot of the games do have equivalents all over over the world you know like red light green light the candies tug of war especially you know marbles as we said the kind of hopscotch one technically like kind of kind of hopscotch based yeah <laughs> 
I mean, don't get me wrong, like, if I saw that in a school, I'd be a bit miffed. But yeah, you know, you've got equivalents there, for the most part. And I think at the end of the day, that's what really brings it in. It's that kind of wave of, like, not only nostalgia, but dread as well. Yeah. It's conflicting themes that you think should clash and shouldn't go together. You know, it's like oil and water. You've got, like, this very bright and colourful playground and these, like, bright sets. And at the end of the day, it's all this, like, horrible, visceral, like, violence and blood and guts. And it, it just, it clashes and it shouldn't work. But, like, it does. It shows you how, A, messed up the games are, but, B, how desperate people are just to get yeah. that 45.6 billion won. It's just breathtaking. And I, I think we'll be hard-pressed to find a show anytime soon that has reached, like, the scale that Squid Game has. Oh, yeah. Because there will definitely be a show. There will be a show that will surpass it, but that I don't think I'll come until years. It'll be years until that comes. I'd agree with you. Probably most likely. I I can't see anything rivaling it soon. So just before we close off, are there any other like final thoughts you want to say about this series? Yeah, so to sum up, like I really enjoyed the series. I don't think it's perfect. You know, not everything works. I think some things work better than others. But overall, like I really enjoyed it. I think it's a it's a perfect length. The nine episode structure was was perfect. That's all that's as long as it needed to be. Uh the character work is is fantastic. It's like the acting is superb. Like kudos to like kudos to the actors for all the work they did. Like they they are the high their characters are the highlight of the show and yeah I would if you haven't seen it by chance you know if you're one of the very few people who hasn't seen it and you know like apologies that you've now spoiled we spoiled the series for you but you know I still recommend go watch it and you know like because it, it, it's really good it's really really good I would second that and definitely say that if you haven't seen it go see it the only thing that I'm a bit hesitant about is I'm a little bit worried that this show is going to suffer from its own fame and mm. maybe that's a bit of a pretentious thing to say you know because as I said like when I came across this show I watched this before the hype before like there were any spoilers before anyone knew what a squid game was and i loved it like it was brilliant going in completely blind not knowing anything but now that you know you've got the honeycomb memes which i have to admit i did use that as a thumbnail for my chat to shorts episode so apologies for that but you know all the memes have probably spoiled it for people people were you know again they're imitating the games and things that uh, this is something that does annoy me and i don't want to sound like a hipster again to be like i liked it before it was cool because it was literally like a fleeting moment as soon as more people get their hands on a series like this there's gonna be a lot more criticism you know there's gonna be a lot more parodies a lot more deconstructions a lot more people saying well if i were writing squid game you know it's like a bugger off it's like a lot more criticism is gonna be flung at squid game game and I feel as if if it's not careful it's gonna fall under the weight of its own success and this is something that and don't worry this is the last time I'll bring it up but for that money heist show I was telling you about first two seasons absolutely loved it but according to behind the scenes for that show it was it wasn't really received very well like it was on Spanish television and then I think they pulled it off and they you know like people weren't really interested in it and then Netflix picked it up and then suddenly it became like really popular and that's another show I would recommend because the first two seasons are great it's currently on its fifth season now with the final part coming out in December so by the time you listen to this you know in the far future it's probably out by now it's a show that just degraded in quality for me personally and that's the thing I'm worried about with Squid Game that the characters that like Gion I was about to list the other ones but they're all dead I was, I was going to be like, Ali, El Nam, Sang Woo, who went to SNU. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, they're all dead. But, you know, I, I don't, well, not I don't want it to undo it, but I am worried that's what's going to happen with it. But that that's the risk you take with big shows like this. Because, I mean, look at any American show, like Walking Dead. I was about to say Breaking Bad, but I think Breaking Bad kind of gets off the hook. Ones that are too long in the tooth, essentially. I, I, I just hope that it's not going to outstay its welcome that's all I'm thinking we just gotta cross our fingers because I agree like I am a little bit tentative about another 
first season of it. And I kind of hope, to be honest, like if they they obviously are going to make a second season. So I kind of hope that like it's a new cast of characters because I'm not sure I want to see Ji Hoon go through the Squid Games again. <laughs> you know, that feels like it might be a bit repetitive. So hopefully they have some ideas to kind of freshen it up a bit. We can only hope. Mm. And, you know, as you said, as you said, keep our fingers crossed. I think according to the rumours, they are, I, th- I think they are going to keep it fresh and like get new characters in. But it, it kind of seems weird considering how this ends. Also, can I just say like how terrible it is? Well, not terrible because I, I get he wants to stop the Squid Games, but he hasn't seen his daughter in over a year. I mean, that was the only, <laughs> that was the only time I was agreeing with the like organisers of the game because the front man's just like, yeah, Gion, come on, get on the plane, just go see your daughter. Like he could go see the daughter and then come back, but he's <laughs> like, no, no, I gotta stop the games now. It's like, oh, for. F- <laughs> and then it just ends and you're like oh god Gion, why how would you do this but yeah just to kind of summarize i would say try and go into it as blind as you can which is impossible now considering it's everywhere They're like whoever did the marketing for this absolute geniuses absolutely incredible is everywhere for good reason and all of the companies just now are taking squid game inspired iconography although i did see like a very poor taste one where it was about <laughs> i think it was a insurance company that had like see the three symbols on the card oh god and it was like you don't have to risk your life in the squid games and i was like good <laughs> lord fire that person <laughs> it's like that oh poor taste but that that just shows you how extensive the reach is for this show so as the closing point you're gonna hate me for asking this but does this entice you to check out other like korean shows so i mean i'm, I'm gonna be honest i'm probably not going to i'm not a big tv watcher i have to admit like i only really tend to watch a, a few shows and mostly shows that I know I like so I'm not very adventurous when it when it comes to TV um, but you know what like if I did see another like Korean TV show that was like gaining some popularity I would be more inclined now to check it out so what you're saying is you won't be doing a 50 part retrospect of all <laughs> I hope you- you for your top 10 <laughs> I'm hoping to join you for that episode probably very likely <laughs> sorry this is the end of the episode if you excuse me I'm I'm going to phone Green Shield and see if he wants to take part oh, I to, oh no <laughs> I'm sorry, you're getting, you're getting kicked off. You've been squid game. Oh God, can you imagine? See, this is the thing, like, obviously, like, horrible stuff does happen, but if this did happen in real life, you know, and it was, like, televised and things, you could imagine there would be, like, a very, you know, ridiculous catchphrase or something. Even if it was an American remake, it'd be like, you've been squid gamed. And it's like, what does that even mean? Nobody knows, but yet they still do it. <laughs> that, that is a version. Like, between that and the American remake of the raid it's not something i want to watch <laughs> push me through the glass <laughs> <laughs> just yep i'm ready coach i'll wrap my arms around you we'll go together that's fine <laughs> oh, yeah let's uh, <laughs> let's just go together and not watch those kind of things and on that note adam thank you so much for joining me and at last watching squid game because i know i know initially you were a bit apprehensive about watching this but yeah thank you for watching it and doing this review with me no my pleasure my pleasure i'm glad that i'm glad that i've seen it i'm glad i'm glad uh well i'm glad i pushed myself to to watch it um but yeah it was it was well worth it so thank you for thank you for giving me giving me a little push to get me going and then props to my my fiance for for giving the 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 final big push through the glass to Mm -hmm. to watch yes i too would like to thank your fiance for (laughs) getting you to watch this show props to her thank you and yeah without any further ado thank you all so so much for listening to this episode of chat tsunami as always stay safe stay awesome stay hydrated and most importantly if someone comes up to you with a PlayStation card, just just don't take it. Actually, this is something I was going to say. Yeah, this show is not for Xbox fans. I want it to be A, B and X that they're wearing rather than those dumb shapes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody comes up to you with a card with those symbols on it, just buy an Xbox. I mean, it's like, where are you going to get the money for it? It's like, don't care. I'm not going to play the game because hashtag Xbox for life. Um, also, Microsoft, if you would like to sponsor Chat Tsunami, you know, the, do- the door's always open. If Netflix have responded to us by the time of this episode, you know, just ignore this. And yeah, as always, stay safe, awesome, hydrated, and see you guys in the next one.